Wednesday afternoon, live from the wheelhouse on board the MV Kalarna for the Irish premiere of the boat that rocked, and in the studio with us, well, the makeshift studio with us, two stars of the movie. We've got Chris O'Dowd and Tom Sturridge. Gentlemen, you're very welcome. How are you oh, doing, Tony? Happy birthday. Thank you very much. The big 83 at last. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks for bringing in the birthday cake, chaps. Ah, uh, no I problem. Really all. appreciate that. Uh, uh, the two of you guys, one is the son of a famous movie director who plays a young virgin sent to Radio Rock in the movie to learn some life lessons. And uh, the other is a Roscommon man who plays Radio Rock's breakfast show host, DJ Simple Simon. Um, Tom, you're obviously the youngest out of the bunch uh, of guys who appear in the movie, and in the story they take you under their wing and give you advice mainly on how to, well, I suppose, score girls. <laughs> what was it like working with the likes of Philip Seymour Hoffman, Bill Knighty, Risa Fans, and, and Chris here? Well, I mean, it was amazing. It was Why was that like that? Yeah, it was, Tom? Uh, working with Chris was, was an astonishing moment in my life. Sure. Um, something, something that I've, I've waited for. I think, I think forever, yeah. 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 But um, no, I mean it was terrifying at first. But fortunately, we had this sort of this thing that people are calling boat camp, where before we started filming, we we slept on the boat for four days, mm -hmm. and that kind of gave me a chance to stop seeing people as, as movie stars, as heroes, see them, as for the for, for a choice of another word, heroes. Yeah. So it's your stop hero. seeing them as heroes, uh -huh. and start seeing them as as people, as as, as broken. We're horses. just like you. We're just yeah. like you, Tom. <laughs> Everyone knows, uh, Chris, everyone knows you by now as Roy from the brilliant IT crowd, but now, with your appearance in this movie and a, and a few more to come, you're probably now Roscommon's most famous export, aren't you? I like the idea of that. <laughs> uh, you know, there was a, a woman who was born in my town as well called Maureen O'Sullivan. Oh, yes. Who was uh, the first Jane in Tarzan. Yes. Um, along with Johnny Weismuller. Weismuller. Weismuller, Weismuller. Uh, and uh, she, she's, um, she's, it's just me and her, really. <laughs> and I don't think she's any, she's, she's not with us any longer. So it's just me now. <laughs> You're the star from Ross Common, my friend. <laughs> Bring it on. on, on, on you, you play the simple sign of the breakfast show DJ on Radio Rock in the movie, the premieres tonight. And your character goes through so much in this film, from love to heartache and, and back again. What kind of research did you do for the role? Uh, well, I, I, I listened to a lot did of... Did you base yourself on any radio DJs? Well, there was definitely a bit of Tony Blackburn in there, yeah. because he was the breakfast jock on Caroline mm -hmm. at the time. And I listened uh, to a little bit of Larry Gogan from the time as yeah. well, and a little bit of you, Tony. Really? You know? <laughs> Liar. <laughs> <laughs> was it was it that easy to see through that? I can see through that. Uh, uh, no, you were much, you know you know you were much later because you're such a younger man. But no, uh, now he's talking the truth. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I did. I listened to those guys and um, and we got to use the equipment as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Made a huge difference. We set up this central London location where we uh, we tried to be able to do a one hour show as live. Yeah. And once we kind of got that down, it gave us a much better idea of what they would have gone through. Yeah. Uh, what did, did you listen to radio when you were growing up as a kid in Boyle and Roscommon as a kid? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, and, and also the music at the time was so huge. Um, it's the best music that's ever been made. So mm -hmm. wow, that's, I, I think that's fair. It, really? Yeah, six, it's quite, six, six, 69, It's good stuff. It's yeah. Good tunes. Absolutely. It's good tunes around that time. So being able to uh, be a radio station that just play those uh, those songs is incredible. Uh, the movie looks like you've had a lot of fun making it. Was it was it that much fun? Yeah, it was unbelievable. I mean, you can't you can't call it work. We're going, you know, waking up in the morning, getting on a boat, watching the sun come up over the ocean, listening to you know Dylan coming off the PA, and, and watching Chris O'Dell fish for mackerel. It was, it was a magical time. I'd say there was some great outtakes uh, in this movie that are probably left on the on the, on the floor of the director's office. Uh, Most of Chris's part. Most of Chris's part. He's just giving you that look now. He's right. Even through those sunglasses. Uh, were, were there any great moments that did make the movie, there were great outtakes that kind of stood out for you? I, I think, you know, any time the camera is pointed in my direction, it's, it's, it's always a wonderful magical, magic, you know? <laughs> uh, but we managed to get, I think, nearly everything in there. There's, we, in, in a music, movie this big, you know, you shoot an awful lot of footage, so you, you try not to think about what's been left behind and just think about the wondrous things that I've made. <laughs> That's so beautiful. I know. <laughs> you know, there's something about me, Tony, it's just very deep and meaningful. <laughs> I, I, I think you rehearsed across. that on the way down here, Jacob. What do you think, Tom? I, I, I mean, uh, Richard Curtis actually wrote that one. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the lovely line as well, it's like a boat full of honey! <laughs> yes, oh God. That, yeah. was, that, was, your, that was improvised. That was improvised, actually. Really? Yeah, most of the good lines <laughs> um, are improvised. Yeah. And then uh, Dickie just comes up with the story. <laughs> uh, Chris, you, you play a radio DJ on the boat, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you're now a DJ on a new TV series called FM. Uh, That's right. What's going on with this whole radio thing with you? Well, I just like to cut my research in half whenever I can. So if I can do two professions at once, that's what I'm going to do. Next year, I'm just going to play a couple of dentists. <laughs> 
I, I have uh, I've noticed there's a bit of a link between the two of you, because Tom, you started the TV series Gulliver's Travels back in 1996, I think. Um, and Chris, you've been cast in the upcoming Gulliver's Travels movie, so uh, any tips for this man, uh, Tom? I, yeah, I, I, I think he can, he can break new ground. Yeah. I think he can do it on his own. Wow. <laughs> so much heart. It, I, it, it, I'm feeling it myself. Hey, Tony, at this stage, can I, uh, can I give a shout out to some people? He's like, he's almost like, he's like, he, I'm going to leave it to you. You've got the mic, you've got the headphones on, go for I've it. Got, uh, I've got some people coming up for the premiere tonight, yeah. the whole way from Boyle. Yeah. So I've got uh, the beautiful Georgia Durkin mm -hmm. and uh, my wondrous mother. Oh, very nice. Uh, What's her Denise, name then? Denise O'Dowd, Denise O'Dowd, and they're on the train as we speak. Can I, can I give a shout out to my cousin who might be the most beautiful girl in Dublin right now? Really? Maisie McNeese. What's her name? Maisie McNeese. Maisie McNeese. Maisie McNeese. Yeah. I don't buy that at all. Maisie McNeese. Hey, no, take a, that pretty, back. a pretty foot cream. <laughs> Uh, I, I know, Chris, you moved to L.A. You're, you're trying to get away from all, all the you know, people noticing your stuff. I'm reading about this in a paper the other day. That you moved from, uh, you, you were in the clinic, which I loved, by the way. Oh, I thought it was a great piece of drama for Morty. You moved to London, and then you got out of London to go to L.A. to get away from all the uh, people noticing you. Is, is that a bit of Next a stop, Neptune. Is it a, <laughs> is it a bit of a contradiction of sorts? Going to L.A. for me. Uh, you I know. sold out. I hustled down, my friend. I love it. I, I've sold out, and it's just left me so bloody rich. <laughs> <laughs> the, best thing, the best thing about selling out, I'd have to say, is the money. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm just over there for a little while, and now I've got this job, and I'll be coming back to shoot that in London. Yeah, great. And, and what's the next thing for you, Tom? Oh, I just finished a film called Waiting for Forever with um, Rachel Bilson, an actor called Richard Jenkins. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be a good film, oh, thank you. Well, Tom, Tom's going to be a, a huge, huge star. I think so. I mean, you know, a million dollar smart. The girls up here in the uh, in the uh, wheelhouse are, are uh, they've been googling you. I think I think that the girls, the way that they've been looking at Tom, have be been short with disgust. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, really nice to see you, and Chris, uh, really nice to meet you as well. But Thanks for having us. Thank you very work. much for Happy having me. Thank you very much as well. And uh, now that you've made all your dough, and the drinks are on you after the show too. <laughs> Chris O'Dowd and Tom Sturridge in the studio. Round of applause for those two. Let's get back to music here on Today FM.